Hello everyone. Uh, so we are Felix and Ronan from uh, Great, the Great team from Kaspersky, and we will talk about uh, false attribution uh, situation uh, that arrive uh, in our jobs. So we are a, a team of about 40 researchers around the globe, mostly focusing on uh, advanced uh, cyber attacks. Uh, maybe uh, you know some of the groups of operation uh, the team has covered uh, for the past uh, few years. And uh, jumping directly to uh, our topic, we are focused on uh, analyzing uh, malware. So at first, uh, we were mostly uh, analyzing uh, cybercrime threat and uh, cyber espionage case. But, but as uh, the cyber world expands to uh, every corner of uh, our society and the threats are evolving uh, according to this new um, society, we are also uh, moving our area of uh, interest uh, to cyber sabotage. And uh, we come up uh, with new problematics related uh, to uh, more information uh, information uh, attacks uh, and no more uh, malware which can for infosec people as we are uh, pose uh, some problem or new new challenge to overcome uh, so we, are, we will talk about false attribution, but for, first we have to talk about attribution. So it's a very big topic uh, nowadays in uh, the InfoSec area. And uh, it's generally uh, bad or not completely understand. Uh, attribution is not just putting a name or a country name uh, behind uh, a cyber attack. For us, it's uh, first a tool for naming cases uh, or tagging uh, indicators. Um, and uh, so you all know the naming problem in the AV industry. We all come up with our name because we all search in uh, our corner and it takes time to, to bring up uh, analysis. But attribution for technical people can be um, uh, useful uh, mostly uh, for tagging uh, your um, your indicator, for driving your uh, uh, anticipation team as well as your reaction team, and for um, infosec executive people, it can be uh, useful to prioritize um, resources uh, on. Um, on subjects where uh, they may lack uh, of defense capability. Uh, attribution, so we also, uh, as I say, uh, generally picture ourselves attribution as uh, giving an uh, individual name or uh, the name of our army unit. But it's not always useful. Uh, when you are uh, behind uh, your uh, CM or uh, you are doing an incident response, you don't care, generally. But because it's not the level of attribution you need. As I say, for researcher, technical researcher, what will interest us is to tag uh, indicators that, um, uh, that belong to the same operation, to the same what we call cluster, activi cluster of activity. And uh, even if we are working with, working with um, technical artifacts or technologies, we always have to remember that behind uh, a malware campaign, there are at least one human which is performing uh, the campaign. So for regular people, let's say not journalists or government, uh, it will, uh, once again, uh, help you to uh, better know your indicator, to tr triage or um, triage them. And for researcher, uh, it's just that 
we don't uh, when it's useful and sometimes it's, it's useful to to ask ourselves who may did it or in what kind of uh, news geopolitical political context it happen it may lead you uh, to uh, closer to to the answer how we do technical attribution uh, so it's a very broad and uh, hard topic so we mostly uh, look at um, indicators in uh, happening in uh, network communication or uh, artifacts inside uh, malware or uh, ma uh, tool used by, by the attackers and the real cost is time first of all and uh, as I say Depending on the, of uh, your um, of your activity, if you are doing an incidence response, for example, you don't have the time to ask yourself who did it. You just have to stop uh, the fire. And uh, the second, which is uh, sometimes more complicated to to explain, it's it require require skills, because everyone, pretty much everyone, can. Uh, can look at a command and control uh, address, IP or a domain name, can look at strings uh, inside uh, a malware, but it requires skills to then go to the next level of ab abstraction, to the operation level of abstraction, or to the group level of abs abstraction. And attribution also, uh, uh, not only work with technical artifacts, you also have to mix it with geopolitical event or victimology. And that's where it starts to be tricky for uh, technical people like us, is, is that we are not trained or trained enough uh, compared to other uh, specialties to deal with this kind uh, of information. And all these indicators uh, are logical indicators uh, apart from the geopolitical one, uh, and they all can be mani manipulated. Um, so there are a lot of jokes about uh, attributing to uh, country X uh, an attack because uh, the, I, the C2 server of the, the IP address of the C2 server was hosted in X country. So that's uh, yeah, pretty good joke. Uh, but sometimes it can work. Uh, but attribution, as I say again, is not always um, necessary and is uh, the least thing to search during uh, an incident response. And if you are doing good or bad attribution, in uh, every case, you will lose time. Uh, since uh, several years, about 2010, there have been a new area in um, the uh, information security uh, um, industry, uh, what we can call next gen and uh, all the threat, cyber threat intelligence player. And there have been a kind of a race uh, to attribute attack uh, to country. Uh, because it's sexy, because it, uh, you are making the headline at, uh, and it gives a reputation or it shows your uh, investigation capability to the, to the broad public. Uh, quick and dirty attribution can also sometimes help you during uh, an investigation. If you look, if you find, for example, um, a domain name uh, of a C2 uh, infrastructure that you already know uh, belonging uh, to, the, um, to the campaign of an actor, you may go back to the knowledge you have uh, to this actor. You can go back to the knowledge you have to the, to about these actors and uh, search for uh, past indicators of these actors into your network. But quick and dirty attribution can also uh, have, of course, uh, drawback. So again, losing your time when it's not necessary, when you have uh, other priority. Um, you can also have uh, 
when you are at a government level or a very high executive uh, private sector level, you can have political uh, drawback, po uh, reputation drawback, uh, when you are doing uh, wrong, bad, false attribution. Uh, we are also, by publi uh, publishing what we know about threat actor, uh, we we search to, um, to contribute to the overall uh, InfoSec knowledge, but we are also giving uh, the attacker free, uh, free audit of their infrastructure, of their campaign, and sometimes we even give them uh, in our blog post some advice. Ah, they did this, it was, it was not good, uh, they shouldn't make this uh, next time, and next time they are not doing it. Uh, but attribution, the real, real, real one, uh, comes come up uh, with uh, the concept of visibility. So you have to see uh, the things uh, to be sure to have uh, the proof that it was that country or that people. And uh, in our team, you may think that we are with about uh, 40 million endpoints in the world. We have the visibility to do uh, country level or individual level uh, attribution, but we consider that we don't. And that uh, seems that we have really, it's something we have to be really honest about it. Uh, we think that uh, AV industry without further capability has not uh, enough visibility to, to do this kind of attribution. So now I will. Uh, let uh, Felix uh, present you some uh, some false flag uh, to jump uh, yeah. on the topic. Um, just uh, false flag. What is that? Is that the attacker just hide uh, behind a, a false flag, a false avatar? Uh, and we will see uh, during during the whoop, during the Syrian conflict that uh, some attacker just used a false flag in order to to do attacks on some uh, some uh, some country. So the first case uh, is the sh strange case of the dot tier. Uh, it's the the, uh, the DNS name of uh, Turkey DDoS, and it's uh, related to the untold story. So you will not have like um, uh, reverse code or things like that during this conference, but uh, we will. Uh, we will speak uh, just after why there is no like real copycats uh, in APT. So um, the the story just takes place uh, the 24th of uh, November 2015 when uh, just a, a Russian uh, um, jet was shot down by a Turkish F-15 uh, just uh, across the Syrian border, the Turkish border, and in the Turkish airspace. And like four days after, we have seen uh, an account uh, just created from nowhere uh, linked to the anonymous community, uh, which was very strange with this account is that he has uh, created his uh, Twitter account, his YouTube account, and um, with a uh, uh, a late motive is trying to fight uh, against ISIS. Okay, it's may maybe anonymous. Um, but uh, this activist was stealing the brand of uh, a known website that is Anon Ops. And Anon, Anon Ops just don't do any, uh, any campaign related to DDoS or things like that. It just gives uh, materials and uh, tutorials to the community for hiding themselves uh, using VPNs and and so on. And uh, which was strange also, yeah, uh, which was strange also is that this activist uh, was um, like a pro-Russian activist and he has done many video against Hungary, Germany, Turkish, but well-funded video. Uh, I don't know if you, you know the anonymous community and stuff like that, but uh, uh, they they use a lot of uh, media, etc. But this man uh, just created nine video in one in uh, one month, uh, many on false operation. Is that uh, he he has created his own legend uh, using like opaque Cloudflare, etc., etc. And what we have seen just after is that uh, this activist just told the Russian journalist, "Hey, oh, I'm here, I'm here." And uh, big Anon community. So he, he was just sending sending tweets 
uh, to to Russian and anonymous journalist just to to create his um, uh, his profile and his legend. And just one week after the Twitter creation, we have seen a, a massive DDoS attack, and this um, this activist just. Uh, take the responsibility of this DDoS attack by a video uh, like uh, Anonymous against ISIS, uh, against Turkey that supports ISIS, which was uh, a sentence like uh, that the Russian government during this crisis between Russia and Turkey just said, said, said in the media like Turkey is supporting ISIS. So the, this video was published, uh, linked by media as a response of uh, this Turkish ISIS collisions. So we can see this video in, on many media like Daily Dot, etc. And so, um, so if we uh, analyze just uh, the timeline, so you have the, the crash, uh, you have the account creation with many tweets, you have the DDoS, and nothing after. Uh, nothing, just because uh, you had uh, a reconciliation between Turkey and, in, and Russia uh, in June 2016, uh, but uh, the Twitter account uh, goes dark just after. And it's not very uh, normal for uh, this type of, uh, of community just to go dark, uh, doing an attack, uh, creating a legend, and go dark. Uh, and we have uh, another case that it's more uh, interesting. So uh, we don't know which country uh, behind the previous attack, but maybe uh, you can have an idea. Um, uh, the an uh, another case and another aircraft is that uh, Belgium was accused by uh, the Russian uh, Ministry of Defense to have done an airstrike against the locality of Azadiak, which is a, a very, very small locality in, north, in the northeast of Aleppo. And um, uh, this airstrike, uh, um, the, the Russia just said that um, the airstrike uh, killed civilians. And uh, which was uh, very strange with that airstrike is that uh, you know that the Syri you may know that the Syria conflict is very mediatized, and each uh, strike have some video, etc. But nothing uh, related to that on Twitter, uh, live view a map that follows the Syri Syrian conflict, and other specialist websites. And which was uh, very strange is that uh, so this. This uh, airstrike was mediatized by uh, some Russian news websites, but it didn't make some noise uh, in Belgium uh, till uh, an, a new account named the Syrian Cyber Army uh, just uh, attacked uh, the RTBF and the standard um, news websites. And it just brings the news in Europe that uh, Russia uh, accused uh, the Belgium to have done this airstrike. So uh, this, um, this false flag is very interesting because you have a website and you have uh, like a, a Twitter account. And uh, it's very interesting because it's told also the name of like Syrian Electronic Army, but it's Syrian Cyber Army. So you have only two articles on this website. Uh, the first declaring to have attacked, to have done some DDoS uh, in 2015 against uh, some target without any proof or target press release. And the second was on the Belgium DDoS attack. Uh, the, the website has some link to like Aryan Cyber Army and Syrian Electronic Army. And as the previous case, they just love to talk uh, about their campaign to, to have some media coverage. So uh, it's during the, the DDoS attack against uh, Belgium. And when you see the timeline of the tweets, uh, you have the hack on creation uh, just uh, uh, in, uh, in October. Uh, at the beginning of October 2015, you have the hack on creation. One year without no tweets, nothing, and just during the DDoS, you have uh, some uh, some tweets to to the media. And why 
we can see that it's very strange that you have an account that don't produce anything be, um, during one year. If you look at the whiz, uh, the whiz of the domain and you look the date uh, when we, it was created, uh, it's uh, just one week after the, sorry, the Russian intervention in Syria. And uh, if you look at the name server, uh, it's like pretty known to be uh, linked to uh, like SOFACI threat, act uh, threat actor. Okay, uh, this uh, type of uh, DNS, it's not only SOFACI, you have some scam, you have some uh, Viagra selling, etc. But it was used also uh, related to some false flag operation linked to SOFACI as cyber bearcuts. And which is uh, interesting with that is that um, um, uh, is that uh, cyber barcodes has also a delta of one week, uh, and it was created just after uh, the um, the Russian involvement in the Ukraine conflict. So you have also other uh, sophisticated non-false flag like Yemen cyber army, cyber caliphate, fancy bill, the Silix, Guccifer. And all of the all of this name just uh, just still uh, no name in order to have some mediatization, etc. So if you want to create false flags, just the ingredient is just creating a legend, stealing a known name, uh, telling journalists that you exist, uh, creating a, a legend with a false flag operations, uh, le uh, false operations, and just. Uh, have the capacity to drive uh, the the community uh, behind you, and uh, like anonymous are like uh, have some ego. Some so when an anonymous said, "Oh, I've done DDoS attack on that," all of the anonymous said, "We have done DDoS uh, attack on uh, that target." And what's about copycat? Uh, you have many people are fearing that. Uh, oh no, it's not. Uh, Chinese that uh, are in whole network, but it's, it can be like US or uh, Russians or I don't know, uh, Turkey or... And the, the fact is, it's very expensive to, to create copycat, uh, just by time, uh, for human, etc. So why reinventing the well uh, when uh, you have just open source tools that do the job uh, very, uh, very easily? Uh, why reinventing the well when you have like uh, vulnerability that works um, and it's creating copycats it's uh, very more than uh, just raw packaging malware uh, because like uh, many like reversers said okay it's very easy to repackage malware and I will uh, like use an HTTP browser or plug X implants to compromise some targets okay but uh, the, the fact is that uh, if you look at intrusion sets, uh, like attackers group, they use uh, a, a logic, uh, an operational rhythm, an infrastructure, a victimology that it's very hard to mimic. So uh, just a computer hack has a lot of char characteristics and some of, of, of them are very hard to copy. Um, and if you look uh, on the right, you can see uh, a pyramid of paint, but for copycats. So uh, the first layer of infrastructure is very easy to 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 mimic. Uh, you just have to 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 buy some domains or server uh, linked uh, to the VPS that the, the the attackers that you want to mimic used. Uh, for Express, you can reuse Express. For Backdoor, uh, you can just um, uh, record them, but after that, inside the network, for the TTPs inside the network, the lateralization, how they steal data, is it industrial or not, what tool they use, it's very difficult because some of the attackers group uh, obviously uh, use their own tools inside the network. And if you don't know that, if you don't do an incident response, it's very hard to you to mimic uh, this attackers group. So, uh, Today, uh, we haven't seen a real copycat, just some false flag like in a, a, um, so, um, a Guardian of Peace with Sony, uh, with uh, Lazarus that used just Russian word in their malware. Uh, but it's, uh, it's just that. It's not a real, uh, we haven't real case of real copycats. 
And yeah, if you reuse the tool, maybe AV have some signature, so it's very tricky. Um, so uh, just to finish uh, about uh, after these two uh, examples, which may seem to be pretty simple, so uh, it's just creation of Twitter account, uh, it's pinging media, it doesn't require hardcore uh, computer science skill. Uh, so we, you may say, yeah, people, uh, some of them uh, must have more advanced uh, methods. And, or what are the future methods that will kill cyber threat intelligence, attribution, and things? Uh, yeah, uh, the fact is <laughs> um, advanced and future method will be the ones that will work. Uh, it will not the more it will not be uh, necessarily more advanced, more technical. You just um, you just when you are an intruder, you have a mission, you, and the mission has to be accomplished. Um, we also, uh, but we can see some trends. Uh, the first of one is uh, mercenaria, uh, what we can say, consultor uh, world, a new world between consulting and contractor. Uh, we have, uh, we can see uh, more and more, or uh, we are able more and more to see that some actors are not directly tied always to the same. Uh, uh, to the same commanditary, uh, and uh, this actor uh, can uh, can target uh, one day um, media company, and uh, another day will stall uh, uh, ballistic secrets from a government, and the other day uh, uh, it will intrude uh, into a bank to steal money, uh, and this mercenaria, this hacker for hire uh, things. Uh, is uh, or may be a way uh, to disrupt the attribution to the very last people that wanted, really wanted uh, that, that intrusion to be done. And we just we we hear, we hear a lot about. Uh, uh, DDoS uh, as a service, malware as a service, but we j we just have to understand that uh, crime crime is a, a service at the uh, at the base. Uh, it's maybe the, the industry that is most based on a return from uh, return from customer and a service based uh, industry. Uh, the second uh, trend we may think about is what we can call uh, SIGIN shoulder surfing. Uh, what some of our, our colleagues uh, uh, called a force party collection. So it's basically you are an attacker with the capability to intrude into another attacker. So why uh, taking the risk to intrude into a network if you can intrude into uh, the, if you can insert yourself into the campaign made by another attacker? Um, so you just collect uh, the thing, uh, the attacker you are uh, hacking uh, is collecting itself. So you have two ways to do it. Uh, passive collection, we, which will be uh, just uh, listening to, uh, to the wire, listening to the, uh, to the, to the radio wave. Uh, on several parts uh, of the network communication from uh, victim to server, server to attacker. Uh, you also have uh, online or post-mortem uh, de um, uh, decipher. Uh, but you can also uh, do an active collection, meaning that you are intruding uh, into uh, the attackers. So we have some example uh, where, for example, Crutching Yeti had a PHP backend server, and uh, we found uh, into it a backdoor uh, put by another attacker that will give every uh, every victim address to the to the attackers of the, the attackers. And uh, if you look at uh, the sample, uh, this net traveler samples, you can find some uh, weird things. And uh, when you dig uh, a bit, uh, you can find a backdoor listening to uh, one of the most lit ports in the world. Uh, 
In conclusion, Mister. <laughs> yes. So uh, I think that during like geopolitical crisis, uh, we will see some states just. Uh, creating an uh, artificial uh, false flag in order to do some uh, real false flag just in the future. Um, false flag exists. Uh, we have seen that with SOFACI, but uh, other attackers group just do false flag because the media will think about, uh, like with NotPetya, for example, uh, media will think, oh, it's a cyber criminal attack and not, uh, really not. Um, but uh, for copycats, uh, obviously, um, I think that we will not see. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> we will not see uh, them uh, because of fourth party collection. As Ronan said, uh, we can do that with Sigint uh, access. We can do that just by compromising data centers. Uh, we can do that uh, by compromising C2s. Uh, so um, fourth party collection, I think it's uh, really the future and. Uh, uh, I don't know if you have seen the slide of uh, Edward Snowden on that, like I drink your milkshake. Uh, it's uh, not a future, um, a future method, but uh, it's uh, today like a past method. Uh, they, they started like seven or ten years ago to do that uh, in the NSA. Uh, so uh, it's actual and, uh, and, uh, more and more, we will see more and more actors doing that. Without, I think, seeking access and uh, just by compromised uh, the attacker's infrastructures. Thank you. If you have any question. Okay. Thanks a lot, guys, for being up so early to do the talk. Uh, any questions? Everybody asleep still? Do you want? Well, coffee comes later, but you know. Oh. Uh, I've got a, a quick question. So you're talking about uh, the skills and things you need to look into this, and you mentioned geopolitics. Does everybody in this room now have to become an expert in geopolitics to be able to interpret this stuff? Um, no, of course. Uh, <laughs> everyone should have the skill necessary to accomplish his, uh, his job. Uh, but it's true that uh, in some parts uh, now of uh, the infosec industry, so we moved after, yeah, before uh, 2010 when we were in uh, an info information security world and now, uh, so it may just be for you a fancy or a marketing world, but we are in a cyber security uh, world, uh, which, uh, which include other area of, uh, of expertise. And as we say, we are not geopolitical experts. Uh, we, we try uh, to um, educate your, ourselves uh, in that direction. And uh, I can just encourage people also to do the same, uh, to better understand the, some uh, attacks uh, outcomes. But in your incident response, it's, it's not necessary. Uh, but for our, our general, uh, general culture, I think it's really important nowadays to, to, uh, yeah, to think uh, beyond uh, just uh, the malware things and uh, the network uh, communication. There are a lot of information that are relying uh, on other parts uh, in, a, in a cyber tech operation. Yeah, and uh, like geopolitics just uh, allows to anticipate some attacks. Uh, if you look like for the five years plan in China or stuff like that, you can see the sector that will be targeted by attackers. And uh, like you, if you look at intrusion sets, uh, they, they are part of entity, state entity, or private sector, but they have an operational rhythm of attack. Uh, the contractors are driven by other industries, so it's very interesting to have some, uh, uh, like, geo, uh, geoeconomic uh, 101 or st stuff like that, just to understand that when there is a fusion between two societies, uh, two big societies, it can be interesting to, to look in the network to, to see if someone is interesting about that. Uh, but, well, I think for, for us, uh, when we have to deal with uh, nation state attacker and it's uh, obviously uh, one uh, one stuff that we have to have one uh, some skill <laughs> thanks any any other questions okay i expect more questions after you've all had coffee okay 
Okay. Well, thank you again. Thank you.